Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET VBPI. So from this video onwards, we are going to study the filters in ASP.NET VBPI. So let us start. So first of all, we'll understand what are the filters theoretically. So if I say in programming language, filters are just a plain classes inheriting some specific classes and as well as implementing some specific interfaces as we move ahead definitely we are going to see those details practically but first of all we'll understand why we need a filters and what filters exactly do so as the first line says here filters injects an extra logic into request processing so whenever our action method get executed at that time whatever logic we have mentioned in our filter it get executed automatically okay now what is the purpose of filters so basically filters provides a simple and elegant way to implement cross-cutting concern now what cross-cutting concern means basically it is a term which refers to the functionality that is used all over an application but it doesn't fit into any single place and if we try to do it it would break the separation of concern pattern so the classic example of cross-cutting concerns are logging authorization caching so logging can be any logging if you want to put a general log while execution of your method or action method you can write that log or a very simple example is error logging so whenever there will be an error i want to log those details somewhere either i can log it in a plain text file or i can log it into a database so whatever is your requirement as per that suppose you want to log those detail error details somewhere so if i want to do this what option i will have in each and every action method of my web api i have to write a logic of logging right that action method actually contains the business logic and along with that i have to add a code related to error logging or any kind of logging okay so what happened this action methods will not be independent along with the business logic it will also contains the code related to logging now again i have to repeat this code everywhere because each and every action method can raise an error okay there can be an exception so again i have to repeat it everywhere so what is the option so filters are very neat and clean approach so what you can do you can write that logging related code in a filter so it will be independent of a action method and wherever required you can use that filters okay so it will be easy to maintain also because you are going to write that code in a separate class it will be not mixed with a business logic okay so this way filters provide a very clean and neat approach now let us see what are the types of filters available in asp.net so these are the various types of filters so first one is i mentioned these filters in the order of their execution so there are four types of filters and if your application implements all these filters in that case it will execute in this order means first of all authentication filter get executed then authorization filter after that if you created any action filter that action filter get executed an exception filter will be executed whenever there will be an exception so here four columns are made first is filter type second one is interface then if there is any default implementation for that filter in asp.net web api and this is just a description of this filter so the first filter is an authentication filter and this authentication filter forces user to authenticate before execution of any action method means until you authenticated you can't use 
BAB API means you have to provide your credentials and if that credentials are valid then only you are able to use that action methods in our BAB API. So there is no default implementation available for authentication filter. So what it means? It means you have to create your own authentication filter. So whenever you are going to create a filter in that case as I said it is just a plain class but it should inherit attribute class and it should implement this I authentication filter then only it will be considered as filter. So basically filters are applied as an attribute therefore it is very necessary to inherit attribute class and implement its respective interface. So the next filter is an authorization filter. So what it does? The authorization filter restricts access to action methods to specific rules. Means, see, uh, whenever we create any web API or any web application, there is classification of a rules. Means this particular part of my web api will be used by this particular group of people this particular part of my web api will be accessible to this particular group of people that means nothing but a people belongs to specific roles means admin can access this a normal user can access this okay this kind of categorization is always there so with the help of authorization filter we can mention those things so here for the authorization filter we have an authorization filter attributes means asp.net web api provides the default implementation for it but suppose you want to override it means you want to add your own functionality in that case it should implement i authorization filter okay now the next type of filter is an action filter so what action filter allows us it allows us to add an extra logic before and after execution of action method means whatever logic you have put there it always get executed either before or after the execution of your action method again there is default implementation available which is action filter attribute but suppose if you have a custom requirement in that case you can implement i action filter now the next filter is exception filter so i hope all of you guess it so exception filter handles all the exceptions in web api which are not handled so as i said no initially i gave you an example of error logging so whenever there will be an error if you want to log it somewhere you can put that logic in exception filter so again there is default implementation available which is nothing but exception filter attribute and again, if there is a custom requirement in that case, you can create your own class which will inherit the attribute class and implement I exception filter. So definitely we are going to see all these things one by one in upcoming video. Now, the next thing is how to apply the filters. Once you create a filter, right? How you will apply it? So there are three ways to apply your filter. So you can apply it at a controller level. Once you apply it at controller level, in that case, by default, it gets applicable to each and every action method in the controller. But if you want to limit it at an action method level, in that case, you can specify the filter over an action method. But again, if you want to apply any filter globally, then instead of going for controller level option or action method level option, you can mention or you can register your filter in webapi.config.cs. So in upcoming videos, we are going to see all these details one by one and practically. If you have any doubts or any concern, please write it in the comment box. Thank you for watching.